Well, hello everyone. Welcome to another theme workshop. Hopefully everybody's doing uh, great this week. Having a good, good summer. Dave, how you doing? It is a hot one here in Canada, but uh, perfect time to stay indoors and work on another theme. So I, I can't wait to get started. Hopefully everybody is doing well, either here uh, listening to the stream or later watching on YouTube. It has been a pretty, pretty nice week and I've been humming and hawing which theme to do next. I did get one request to do a vertical theme and uh, I would like to get around to making a vertical theme, although there will be some challenges in doing so. But if you're watching this and I haven't done one yet, please comment, leave a, a something about what kind of vertical theme or exactly are you trying to, does, does Big Box need right now? Uh, I know there's a couple going on uh, around. Maybe there's a need for a more modern one. I believe there's already like a arcade style one uh, and, a, and, and a retro one already. And I think there's a default one that could be used but I can I always I do want to get around to doing a vertical theme I probably will any suggestions about one particular will be much appreciated and Dave yeah I'm doing doing well gotta keep gotta keep my water going I had some someone comment about this this crazy effect that you can see stuff going on or uh around me and this is actually because uh i don't actually have a green screen so you're gonna see these flickers around my face <laughs> i am using a program called nvidia nvidia broadcast which has sort of like a software fake green screen and you can kind of tell it doesn't work that well maybe i need to invest in a green screen at some point i just don't know where i'm gonna put it I'm literally standing in a room that's about, I don't know, a meter, <laughs> a meter long and a meter wide, let's say, I've got a space for right now. Okay, so let's not dawdle some more. If nobody has any specific recommendations, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the theme that I'm wanting to do today. I haven't loaded this up beforehand, so let's go to the forums and uh, oh, let's get it up for, for now. And there is a theme that I created a while ago and I've been wanting to recreate it for, for a bit. I hope this is what I called it. Yes. So I made this Illuminate theme uh, a long time ago and, and I wish I actually spent time before the steam to look at exactly how I created it because I kind of don't remember a hundred percent but you can see here on the screen let me make that bigger so right here there's like uh, this would be a uh, one of the screens this would be the, the platform view I guess there's a one platform view in this theme And there you go so there's uh, another of the same view and the goal for this theme when I created it was to have sort of like a bar so one bar and that bar will contain the box art and the video and the text list and that would be the whole thing and so the goal I, I believe at the time we had received platform specific views, the ability to have a view per platform. And that allowed us to do stuff like this, where you have a cart in one view and then in the other, in the same view, not have the cart. Uh, and for the same view, have a disc. And in the same view, have this thing here 
where you'd have a widescreen video and all it would be all stationary in that side that bar so when I created this I used uh, some old plugins and stuff to get this working and I'm pretty sure that this theme is either long in the tooth or there's something not quite right with it anymore it needs some updates and since it wasn't made with the theme creator uh, if I had made it in a theme creator if that existed at the time I would be able to simply just pub republish the theme again and that would give with the latest version of the editor and that would give me more updated files but uh, I did not it didn't exist <laughs> Was it high? Was it animated? I think there must have been something animated with this one. We'll have to dive in, take a look. Uh, what I'll do is I'm going to rebuild this in the theme creator, but I'll do it just by looking at these images. So I'm not. Ho hopefully, I'll get really close to what was going on here. Close enough, anyway. Okay, so. Let's get started. We've got basically two different views that we got to do. We've got the platform view and then the game view. And the problem is that the game view probably will have a, a bunch of different uh, versions of it. So let's see. I did not open anything beforehand. So let's go ahead. Go to the theme creator, open it up. Was the yellow tint animated or was it something else? Maybe it was the, uh, the bokeh effect. Say what's up with LaunchBox on Steam? Is LaunchBox on Steam? Or did you mean stream? LaunchBox is on stream. Okay, so let's start building our big box theme. I'm just going to call it the same thing. So I believe I called it Illuminate. Oh, you're saying steam powered games so you're saying steam games within launchbox or is the other way around launchbox on steam <laughs> all right we're gonna have to jump into the platform view. I believe I need the filters view. Text filters, there it is. Will, yes, this will be available on the YouTube, on the YouTube channel. I believe there's a developer stream playlist. You can watch all of my past streams over there. And Michello, thank you so much. Much appreciated. And uh, every Thursday, I'll keep them coming. Right here, right now. Okay, let's, let's remind myself what I'm going to be creating. I'm basically going to be creating this as best as I can. And so in my mind, if I'm looking at this on what I did, when did I create this theme? Submitted February 2019. I see a title, a platform title. You've got the, I guess this is the developer, the year it came out. Total games. We've got this, I believe, is either favorites or recent games. You got the video, you got this bar and then the textless bar. And then we have the background, and then I think a couple different layers here. 
I wonder if I could recreate that with the gradient. With the new gradient system. Hey, Scraggle Waggle. Big Box is the greatest front end ever. Yes. I agree. Oh, I should really close that. I would have to double check. Okay, so in saying that, there's two different things I think I have to do. RetroArch is on Steam? I'm not sure. That sounds pretty cool. If that's true, I'm sure you'd have to go and ask the RetroArch guys. And uh, if they are still working on it, they probably would let you know. I did not realize that RetroArch was uh, becoming part of Steam or getting put onto Steam, if that's true. That's interesting, yeah. I need to remember a bunch of stuff here, like fonts. Okay, I'm hoping that I have downloaded this theme. Let's find out, because I need the theme files that I created three years ago. Let's hope I have... Nice, okay, here it is. It looks like I created it old enough that there's probably a plugin here. Look at all these plugins that I used. Look, I even used the Y2 Guru converters for some reason. I think I remember why. It's got the old prioritized path selector. Okay, so all these plugins you don't have to worry about. This is this is the reason why I want to recreate this theme. These these plugins are not really going to be working too well. This is probably the plugin that I created that just embed the font, which to be honest, doesn't help me because I kind of need to know what the font is. I guess I can see that in the code. Alright, two reasons why I opened this up. The first one was, of course, I need to know what font I used. And the second one is that I need all of the images that I created for this. So it looks like I created and I'm using a bunch of icons. What is this? A giant star play mode is this is the old style we can actually use that hey Michael hopefully you're doing good today look at all these genres I'm pretty sure here's one cool tip if you're looking to create if you are looking to create a theme, and I'm trying to remember, I got these icons from a website called... Let's see... Game Icons. You can go to game... Right here. Game-icons.net They have 4,086 free icons for your games or themes. And so I came here and I probably downloaded, oops, all those icons uh, for the different types of genres that we had at the time. I feel like we have a few more genres, but uh, they might actually just be genres that are like subgenres of these ones. So usually I don't, I don't worry too much about those. Okay, so now that we've got all of the actual images that I created for this theme, what do I have in here? Did I include anything? I think this is empty. Empty, empty. And then I really only created two images, but look at how complicated this one is. Let's take a look. Really? They've got gifts too? I have not seen their gifts. Hey Neil, I guess it is evening for you, isn't it? Yeah, it's just early afternoon over here. 
Hopefully it's not too hot where you are because it's uh, it's been hot this week here. And it's been hot in this room, that's for sure. Man, I see so many different gradient levels here. I'll give I'll give it my best shot. How about that, Dave? <laughs> I will try my best to recreate this. Oh, you know what? And look at that. I even included the bottom. Why did I do that? Yeah, I'll fix that. Okay. So I'll leave that to the side. And I'm going to grab the theme. I'm going to have to do this in two steps. I'm going to create an image. All right, if I'm going to import all my files, easiest way for me to do is create an image, go down to this area here, media folder. That brings me right to the area that I need to be. And I can uh, port over my files. Go. Oh, wow. Okay. Looks like my computer didn't like that, but that's okay. I think my hard drives are just getting too full. And what was I looking at? Means. All right, let's bring over some of this stuff. There we go. Maybe it's not going to like this, too. Did not come over. It did not come over. Oh, I see. So it did come over. It just didn't tell me that it came over. Let's refresh. There they are. <laughs> okay, so I've got my ESRB, my genres, my play mode, or I can call it now max players. I'll use that binding and then the theme files, which I may or may not need to use. Okay, I think we're almost ready to dive into creating this theme. Uh, the last thing will be the code. So if I'm looking at my old code and I, I might as well bring this on screen as well. Let's look at this. Okay. Uh, the old way of doing fonts was to create a plugin and then include the plugin and then put references to the plugin. So I should have references somewhere. Oh, this is not part of the theme. It's this one. Okay, there you go. Looks like I'm using free sans, medium, and bold. That's it. Looked like I was using some sort of light font, but if not, okay. Hopefully I still have them. If not, we'll use something that looks similar. Okay, so let's let's sort of imagine this from the back front. So I'm going to do a background. So in that case, I believe the background is sort of two different layers. No, three different layers. The first layer, and I might not even have a background actually on the platform view. Okay, so then the platform view is two different layers. Those two layers is going to be actually an actual 
this effect? Oh, you can't even see it. I'm going to move it. So I'll move it to the top. And then we will make it. Oh, yeah. See how wide it can get. All right. Perfect. Well, that's one. Oops. The second layer we're going to try to recreate as a rectangle. Just for you, Dave. <laughs> Let me see if I still have that picture up. Okay, so I do have the picture up. Let's see what I got to do to get this white, ugly mess off the screen. All right, for now, I'm just going to dim it down a bit for you guys. And... Okay, can I do this? We'll do a linear gradient. We'll position this one at the top. I love that new menu here. Okay. How are we going to do this? Where's my uh, eyedropper? There it is. Okay, so this first one is going to have this. Second one. Let's see how I'm going to do this. Maybe here. We're going to add another one. About, whoa, I added another two. To about here. We're going to make it this color. Oh. Don't press enter. Let's see what's the next step here. Probably about here. You know what? Now I'm looking at the screen. It's probably more like this. Okay, so let's do the end. Because the end is this yellow. Color and then there's a brighter yellow. Immediately after that. Something like that. And then. I'm missing one color. Something like some bright color right here. Okay, so I think we have the colors down, but I'm pretty sure I need to move this around a little bit. Okay, so I'm just sort of basing it off of this old thing. Am I going to blur it? 
Yeah, I guess I should, shouldn't I? Ooh, that did not blur well. <laughs> How far do I have to go to make it not... Oh, okay. Not really liking the blur. Maybe just like a tiny bit of blur? Or does any blur... Okay, that's actually not bad. That's when it gets bad. Can you see the lines as well as I can? Maybe just five. And it still looks half decent. And of course, this is supposed to be a bit transparent as well, so I'm going to bring it down to about 85%. Oh, I see what happens. So what I'm noticing, and maybe it's just my screen, if I bring it up all the way, it creates some sort of strange layer line effect. Are you seeing that too? Subtitles. I wonder how... I wonder how the subtitles... works, the ones that are auto-generated. You know what? I might not even be able to turn it on. You know, next time I'll try to turn on those auto-generated subtitles and see if they're at all something that's uh, usable by people. Okay, Anderson, yep. I will try to see if next week I can get some subtitles for you. Actually, here. Maybe I can turn them on here. No, I can't. <laughs> it's there. It's just not. I'm not able to, to turn them on. That's kind of funny. Okay. But I'll remember for next week. There's just something odd about this. All right, this should be the bottom. There is something odd about that blur. Yeah, the subtitles might not be something that can be live. Well, I'll find out. Did I say free sands? There's free pixel. I have free sands bold. Well, that's half the battle there. It's not what I wanted. Let's take a look. There we go. One of these ones, not this one. What does that one say? It might just be this one. Let me see. Definitely not that one. Not that one. What does that one say? It says the exact same thing. Okay, so... We'll go with that. Okay, let's save this. Let's see what it looks like. Not sure how much I'm liking this... Uh... You 
and now we're just getting darker. Well, let's try something. Let's put a rectangle behind this rectangle. Now let's see what happens when it's white. Well, I'll go for it for now. I do have the image still, and the image might be more performant anyway. We'll find out. And I probably just created it in, in Photoshop at some point. Okay, so next. We're going to need... Let's try to do the bar here. So the bar is going to contain a bunch of rectangles that are let's say black and they'll go from about here to let's see height how about 800 there I will squish this to the side. Something like that. And then we'll bring down the opacity to something that roughly matches the other one. Oh, maybe 60. There you go. We'll bring in the next piece, which is the platform video. And it looks like I'm on the wrong theme. I don't even have a, a theme video for this system yet. So let's go to Nintendo. We'll keep the aspect ratio for now so I can make sure I get this right. I'm not seeing the smart guide yet, but it's probably something like that. 800. Okay, there it is. Let's make it a bit bigger. So I'm using the cursor keys, holding down shift, or sorry, holding down control. And it's going to get bigger until... It's something like that. How does that look? I think we did pretty good there. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same. I'll make a copy of this. I'll paste it. And now I'm going to move this way over here. There we go. And we've got sort of a, the rough layout of this bar. Hey, right, that's looking pretty good. Except now that I'm looking at it, this might need to go down to 50%. Okay. And of course, I just want the video to stand out a little more. So I'll just put a simple effect on it here. I'll do a drop shadow and we'll see what we can do with uh, directing 
the shadow this direction. Depth will make it come out more. Just like that. It's too much. Uh, maybe 10. And then with blur radius, it'll just blur that drop shadow there a little bit more maybe even more that looks good let's put this at an even 50 percent opacity all right so now the box now the video looks like it's uh, sort of jutting out a little more in this uh standing out hopefully more than the bars on the side so far so good well, let's look at this wheel. What can we do about it? So this is the uh, angle on the right side, and this is the rectangle on the left side. So the wheel... Let's get the right font. I might need to restart the program. Let me do that. And you see sort of what's going to happen if the video is not widescreen and that's something that uh, us theme developers just have to live with although I might be able to solve some of that Okay, so this is going to come out to about here. Change the font, finally. There you go. Bring it up to 40, see what that looks like. Looks like it's way too big. Uh, maybe just 30. And I really don't like that font. It does not look the same. Do I have another type of sans? Maybe like a open. What this one? <laughs> Alfred, <laughs> ban those wheels. <laughs> hey, at least this, this one is not going to be a wheel theme. Uh, I, I don't mind this font, actually. Maybe it needs to be a bit bigger. Okay, a little bit bigger. Six. Man, it would even have to be bigger than that. Okay, so 30, 36, 37. I mean, it doesn't have to be bigger. It might actually be too big now. I don't really like that. Eight. Seven. Okay, we're still not in a good spot here. A 
couple things I need to do. I need this to be all uppercase. How's that look? That looks better. Okay, that's actually... I think that's the winner. Okay, so now let's take a look at, at this image here, what I did. You see here, the selected items gotta be this shade of... of yellow, orange type of color. And then the background needs to be this sort of shade of white, which I believe this already is. So I think we're okay there. And you can see here that I kind of lied that there is a background. So it looks like I'm just going to put the background in. This is going to be full screen. And now I have the option of it either displaying random game images or the platform background, which people actually don't realize that uh, Big Box doesn't come automatically with a platform background image, but you can add one if you wanted to. Now, because of that, you can see nothing's going to show up if I do this option. I might end up just going with folder content and then telling it to do fan backgrounds. Right, and then I don't want really any delay. Just see. So if I make it the selected item, it should only pick one of them. I make it random, so it picks a random item inside of my fan art folder for uh, that platform. For the fan art game folder for that platform. I don't know if you're still there, Dave. Does this look within subfolders as well? There might not actually be subfolders for fan art. Uh, sorry, regional folders. I, don't, I think that that's besides the point here today. Now we can't actually see it because I made this rectangle. Right. There we go. <laughs> see, now you can see it. You believe it scans them? Okay, cool. There you go. So now you can see it's updating every time that I make a change. Like there's some nice, uh, I believe that's a gremlin in the background there. So let's just recap what I've done so far so that it makes sense to everybody. And maybe I'll group this so that it makes a little more sense. I created background, a background layer, or three background layers. It is a background which basically goes into a user's the, uh, game fan art background folder and picks a random image to to display. Now for this one, I will probably stretch it to fill so that it just fills the whole screen. Usually that won't make any difference to be honest because uh, all users usually have 16 by nine backgrounds anyway. But if they don't and they're falling back or doing something, it'll at least fill the, the screen. And I'll do that so that it just looks more uniform because you can hardly see it anyway. The second one here is just sort of like a 50% a 
faded out white layer and that's just to give it a little sheen instead of a, a dark black allows me to control the colors a little bit and then the third one is this sort of gradient rainbow of blue to yellow that you can see here that so far I've used the new gradient control for this which looks like that okay so that's the background the second one I did the bar so let's look at the bar I'll just call this the main main group actually this is the main group I'm forgetting one more there's one more layer and that's this bokeh effect yeah I thought so right here that's also part of the background So you're saying I can do uniform fill and let, let me just, let me just try to wrap my head around what you're just saying. So instead of fill, I could do uniform to fill, which will fill the whole space by zooming into the image while keeping the aspect ratio. But I can do horizontal and vertical alignment and that will work because of your canvas changes <laughs> hey obsidian thanks for stopping by hopefully you didn't miss too much you can always watch the video of the beginning but basically i'm recreating my old illuminate theme and it's looking pretty good so far okay i am correct good awesome okay so i'll leave it at that then it's been like that for over a year okay <laughs> shows how much I, I pay attention to some of these things. Okay, let's call this main main group. Hey, Adam. You're late for the stream. You love to be able to build a cocktail theme. You've been using the old vertical one in my cab, but it's super outdated. Yes, it's an old theme. That is for sure. Now, it is a retro theme, but it does use old code which could be improved and I do want to recreate that into a theme creator so I can get the files out to you guys at some point uh, that people can use but there definitely needs to be some other vertical theme and I do want to create one so if you have any suggestions about the style of vertical theme that you want to see uh, then I can try to do that for you so if you can let me know you're looking for like a more modern style. Do you have any examples that uh, you can shoot my way? I can always take a look. And then maybe I can do that next week. There's actually a place called Argcade. Let me quickly have a look. I always All right, I might be randomly looking at the wrong thing. That's fine if it's not launchbox based. They just need to see a picture maybe. So maybe you can send me if you can find a picture of different examples if this is the one that you like uh, send it to me the best place to send it would be maybe the forums hit me up on the forums send me a PM I will definitely get it if you do that okay so far so good what's the next piece to our random puzzle here it would be the title so let's look at a new group and we'll call this one something like info actually i'm not done the main wheel so the last piece is having a third a third rectangle so i'm just going to use this left one 
I'm going to paste it. It already has all the properties that I want on it. I'm going to call this one bottom. And we're going to put this at the bottom. Ooh, don't want to do that. Let me hit the undo button. Look at that. Best thing to do is just make this width as large as I can and it will go as far as it needs to go. This orange line tells me that it is centered to the canvas, so that's good. I'm not missing any pixels. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, let's do this last information group. Let's start off with, okay, it looks like we're going to have four pieces of information. The first one will be the title of the platform, the developer of the platform, the release year of the, of the platform. And then it looks like we've got the total games. Let's think about that. Yeah, send me the link to the YouTube video, Adam. I can always take a look at that for you. And we can create it, put our little spin on it, do whatever you, you want, and then I can provide that to you next week. So text, we're gonna need a new text element. We're gonna call this platform title. Title. I don't remember which font am I using again. Let's start with an L. There, one of these ones. Bold, we'll see how this one looks. Something like this. Something about this font I don't like. All uppercase. Maybe it's medium that I need. Definitely doesn't look good. What does a semi bold look like? Looks almost exactly the same. We could sit here all day with fonts, couldn't we? Always love a good font. <laughs> I almost like that one. I feel like I have Open Sans font. But I only have the condensed bold, which is too condensed. What does this one look like? Also too condensed. Maybe semi-bold? Man, to me that looks very similar. Maybe I'm just 
just needing a goal, a bold font here. Maybe I have to download it. Not sure why I don't have it already. There it is. All right, so you install a font, you're going to have to restart the program. You like their semi bold? Okay. Last check. Before I move on, I'm going to go with bold and then semi bold, and we're going to make a decision. So there's bold. And there's semi bold. Maybe if I use the semi bold and then add a light drop shadow, then I might like it again. Drop that to five. Something like that. That's not too bad. And I kind of want to soften it up a bit. So a good way to do that is just lower this by a little opacity. Let's see how you accomplish that. You just blurred it by three. Interesting. Well, you know what? You sold me. I'll use that for now, and then we'll see how it goes as we progress through this. Uh, the next thing that we want to do... I'm just going to make a copy. Paste in place. I'm going to bring it down a bit. And we're going to start play around with this layer. Bring this down to about 30. Not bad. Make this a little smaller. And we're just going to change, simply change this to, I believe it's developer, platform developer. Oh yeah, it's Nintendo. Thank you for reminding me, big box. We'll bring this down and I'll soften this one a little less. Maybe 60%, make it a little gray. How's that? Not bad. So of course this is not the platform title, it's platform developer. And what I'm gonna have to do is I need to also do this again, copy, paste, in place. Bring this out and this one's going to become the year, which of course I realized I can't do it this way. So, we're going to go down to release date. 
And we're gonna try to copy as much as we can from here. So 30 with open sans semi bold. But this time I'm gonna use a different font for this and we'll see what font roughly that I had. It's gonna be an orange yellow type of font. Okay. And of course, switch this to just a year. Okay. Perfect, right, Dave? We do need a dock, don't we? Okay, so this release date and this... <laughs> And this uh, developer, basically what's going to happen is uh, I want the release date to always be pushed out so that there's enough space to display the developer. And what Dave's alluding to is that we're going to need one of these parent items. And so there's this item here called a dock. And you can see that uh, horizontally it's going to dock things from left to right. At least that's what this iteration of dock will do, where a stack will stack things vertically. Let's do the dock. Okay, so in this case, I want the first item in the dock to be the developer, so I'll put that in there. Actually, before I do all this junk, where is the dock? The dock's here. Let me paste the layout so it there it goes it appears here I give it enough space and then I will do this now second item in the dock is the release here oh look how annoying that looks that looks terrible and the reason that uh, if you ever run into this issue it's because you have to set each element to just have an auto size of a width and height and you'll see when I do that there it just makes it as big as makes the element as big as the text will go and it will resize the text or it re resize the element if the text becomes larger because you have a lo longer or shorter uh, platform developer We'll do the same thing with the date, even though we don't necessarily have to. It's just best practice. And at this point, you would basically want space in between them. So we'll just create a margin, let's say, on the date. Let's see what I got. Maybe about 10. Now I'm going to need a little more. Give me more. There you go. I'm okay with that. Okay, last step. I'm basically going to make a whole copy of the same exact doc. Yeah, I'll leave it there. So doc, the doc for total games is here. This is the doc for platform and release date. Okay, so for this one here, we're gonna bring this one down to the bottom. Actually, we're also going to line this up to about here.
Okay, I think we're good. There we go. We're going to make the text bigger. That is way too big. I'm also going to change the font to just do maybe the regular one. That's better. Well, I'd like to take this color and we're going to place it on another text layer. Actually, we're going to place it on this one. So far, so good. We don't need the release here anymore, so I'm going to delete that. And instead, this is going to be total, the total games and metadata. And this will be the total game's text. You can basically label these elements as any way that you feel comfortable. Alright, so now let's play around with what we got. So we do want this to display the total game count. So in this case, 774. And this one, I want a constant text value of total game. I'm going to create a third layer. So just like last week, we're going to introduce the ability to display just total game. If uh, somebody's displaying one game in a platform or playlist. So this is going to be the letter S. We go we're gonna need a little bit of a margin on this side that looks similar yeah don't mind it okay I mean, so far so good, so let's put in the logic here. So we're going to do visibility conditions and we're going to make this visible unless we'll make it collapsed if the total game count value is equal to or less than, which I don't think could be less than one, one. Can you have a platform that has zero, <laughs> zero games? I guess at that point you can't really enter into it. Anyway, it's still sound. So therefore, the letter S will be there at all times unless somebody's looking at a platform with one game. <laughs> I believe we managed to find a playlist that had one game last week. for me to test. It was board games or something. There it is. One total game. Perfect. Don't have a video for it, but you can get one if you want. Wouldn't mind finding a, a solution for this. So one solution that I don't have time for would be to create a bezel that's the same size as the element. Now, since I don't have time for that, what I'll do instead is just to complete. Like I want, I want this bar to be completed. So if somebody has a video of this size, I will just create, select, I'll just create a rectangle, put it behind it. How about that? Put 
and I'll copy the selected item video and I'll paste just the layout. I should, and I'll place this behind the video. that work out I guess I could have done it in a frame but don't necessarily need to do that do I I guess the problem with the border per se Dave is like since we can't tell how wide the video will be, the border will look funny if it's kind of large. <laughs> the other option I can do is to just make it completely black. So it just looks like it's part of the video. So that would look like this. Uh, video background. Yeah, there you are, Alfred. What do you think? That might be a little better. Now, the only problem that you might have is the shadow. And so, to get around that, I could actually copy the shadow from the video and paste it into the rectangle and then get rid of the shadow on the video itself. What do you think? <laughs> now we're good to go. Now it looks like we just have borders, black bars around the video. Which, uh, you know, it's fine. Fine with me. No, looks all right. <laughs> You really want that frame, Dave. <laughs> Maybe I can get that frame in some other way. Okay. I think we're basically done. There is one other thing that I'd like to do. Actually, there's a couple things here. This font now could definitely be changed to match the rest of them. I was hoping for a light version of this. Maybe I downloaded one and just didn't install it. Let's take a look. Yeah, I did. Well, we'll see if it's any good. And then, so I think that's the last piece, and then we're done the platform. I just got to uh, edit the font and then edit the styles for the wheel. And of course, now that I'm looking at it, I should probably review before I say a statement like that. We need to do more. Here's the light. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, that's a little better. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna start remembering everything that I forgot to do. <laughs> All right, let's let's one at a time. I'm trying to think. Does this one? No, this one doesn't have the styles that we need. Although this one does say border thickness zero, clearly is not the case. So let's go with, uh, let's go with this one. Okay, this one's a little better. Yeah, so I'm gonna need to take this code and create my whole uh, text wheel Illuminate. Save that. Look at that. All nice and fixed. Okay, so I went through this last week, so I'm not going to go through this in depth again. But essentially, we're looking at all the different types of actions that you can do on the wheel, and then we're going to apply it set a style to them so there are these multi trigger conditions that tell us what the action is that the user is going to perform and then underneath it it's going to tell us the style that we're going to give it so this means that the selected item is not active which means that the user has not pressed enter on it but it is selected so basically it's telling us this is the selected item. So this one here. And let's see, basically what I want is I want to have that white background, but I want it to be faded out more. So I'll even drop it to maybe 30. And then I don't want the text. So this is the background. This is the text, which is text element dot foreground. We're going to change that to that same yellowy color so let's let's find out what that was again there it is of course I'm deleting the wrong one there we go and let's see if that's good enough so let's save that that looks better And then what I probably want to do is fade out this text a little bit. Give it that sort of layered look. But now I have a question. If I faded this all, or if I faded the alpha channel, say really low. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that looks good. Let's bring it down to 33. I like it. I'm going to make the white border a little whiter. Okay, so now I got to think, is this what I need to do? Two, four, six, seven. Two, four, six, seven. Wow, it's gotten really small. What I'll do is I will put a margin on the bottom by, we'll start with five, see how that looks. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. Let's just bring it down to 4.5. All right, perfect. I like it. And of course, we did that. Now let's look at the <laughs> the animation of this. Okay, so there is, and I, I'm not sure how well you can see it, 
very faint. There's a bokeh effect happening in the background. That's that effect when light sort of blurry hits a camera. Almost not noticeable. Well, what we're going to do is we're just going to animate that. So I'm making sure I think everything in uh, in the theme creator will have a point of origin. If, never think, I don't think I've ever talked about this. So the point of origin is the point at which the animation will take effect. So you can see here that it's in the middle, which basically means that if I were to stretch this out, make it larger, it will start in the middle and then sort of stretch out. If this was on this side, it would start on the left side and then stretch the other way out. So it'll start on the left and then sort of like get bigger to the right. So that's sort of what this point of origin thing is. And, and it's good, like if you're wanting to make something grow from the bottom to the top, right? You would set the point of origin at the bottom and then if you make it bigger, if you animate it bigger, then it'll uh, it'll look like the thing's growing. So, different uses. Okay, let's take a look. So, immediately we've got the three triggers. I want it to do it right away as soon as the page loads. And uh, we're going to make the height go from the current height. Is this in percentage? No, wait, I'm doing this wrong. Is there a scale? Okay, scale, that's better. <laughs> Whoa, look at that. <laughs> okay, so let's go to 130. And we'll do that over quite a while, I would say, 10 seconds with the easing functions. Maybe something that I haven't used. I do want it to repeat and I do want it to auto reverse. All right, now I want to do the same thing, but height. Let's see what I'm going to have to reset here. There we go. I want that to repeat. And we want this to be 130. And I want the start time to be the same, zero. And it'll last for 10 seconds. What do you think? Let's see if I screwed that up. Not very noticeable, is it? Maybe... <laughs> the layer's really, really uh, transparent, I think. So there's two things that I can do. I can make a copy of this. Not the most efficient thing to do. Hey, Ernesto. Hopefully your, your day's going well. Here it's always a good day when I get to dive into another theme. Okay, now I can see it. <laughs> you can see right here this uh, this circle. Circle's there. Uh, it's definitely not doing what I want it to do. Because it looks like I forgot. To add the auto reverse on that one. Okay, so that one now has the auto reverse. This one now has the auto reverse. 
Let's take a look. There, see? When you double it, you can finally see the effect. There you go. I do feel like I want it to get bigger over a longer period of time. So because there's two now, I can actually do this in a more efficient way. If I created a grid, made the grid full screen. Oh wait, I might not be able to do it if the grid's full screen. Can I? I mean, it doesn't even matter. Let me just make it the full screen of my layout. Oh, you can. Okay. It's good enough for me. So I'll copy the animation directly onto this grid. And now I can just remove it from these two. Now I only have one animation instead of two. Okay. So now that that's happened, I want this to be 20 seconds and I want this to be even larger, maybe 160. Both height and width. Now let's take a look. There you go. So that's the effect that I want. It's just like more like it's moving, but kind of isn't moving. You know, it's so slight. All right. Not sure if you guys can see it on the stream, but man, that looks, that looks really nice. Okay. Did I say anything else now that I'm all like... Keep forgetting stuff. I feel like... We're okay now. As I say that, I just remembered what I forgot. So the last piece of the puzzle. Favorite or recent games thumbnail? You know what? Does this reflect what I have saved, Dave? I'm trying to think of which system that I actually have. I don't even know. Which one would you guys rather see? Your favorites? Or your recents? There's an argument for either, right? So if I do recents as an example, I'll probably go with recent. Whoops, that was weird. What did I just change? Oh, I think you got a little bit of a bug there. That's an odd one. Ooh, ooh, ah. <laughs> you got one for favorites? You want to see your favorites? You don't want to see which games you jumped into recently? You want to see which ones that I favorite? All right, let me just do this manually a little bit. Oh, that's not the right position. <laughs> oh, that is the right position, isn't it? Okay, so let me just take a look at this. 295. Y position. I, I'm pretty sure I got the right one. I'll make this height 250. That looks better. And, uh, there 
There we go. Let's save that, see what it looks like. Saving a little differently than what it looked like. Okay, so you haven't upgraded this one. That's okay. Does that mean it's not going to change based off of my... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Alright, so these thumbs are still in the works. And just for you, I'm going to change this to favorites. wonder if it can't get any smaller. No, no, I know it can get smaller. It's just not getting smaller yet. Okay. So we'll save it like that. And I think we're done. Which is really cool. How many of you guys had a Game Boy growing up? Was that like a really popular thing around the world? Or was Game Boy only like a North American phenomenon? I was around for so long. When I was a kid, my parents bought myself and my brother one. We both had one and we got one of those old style Game Boy cases where you could carry around and there were the hard gray case and we'd have our Game Boys in there and we would take it out. We only had Tetris for a while, which is kind of funny looking back. I guess that was the pack-in game. And we would play two-player Tetris like all the time with our little link cable. How old am I? No, I'm, I'm pretty old. <laughs> I'm well into my 30s. So I am an 80s... I was 80s born. So you got one, Lex. You got one in 1992. So it was still like a popular thing in 1992. And I'm pretty sure that they were... Popular... You know, quite, quite into the, uh, quite into like the late 90s, I would say, right? Because there was the original Game Boy, this one, and then that was replaced by all sorts of different versions. The Game Boy Pocket, the Game Boy Color, all this stuff. But the problem was that they all played the same games. Really, only the Game Boy Color had a few extra color specific games. You had the Game Boy Advance, Ernesto. Okay, so you were, you were like the next... Well, I remember when the Game Boy Advance was coming out, and of course we were all thinking, okay, finally we can have Super Nintendo graphics on a handheld. That was the exciting part. <laughs> but at that point, I believe the... Was it either the Nintendo 64 like already ran its course, and we had... Uh, what was coming? We had the, uh, the game, GameCube was probably on its way or came out. I think they came out around the same time. They both have the purple colors. The Atomic Purple Game Boy Color. I had a yellow Game Boy Color. That's the iconic color for me for, for the color. And UDJ Virus, cheers from Spain. I own you own a gaming bar. Oh, and thanks to me, I, you got an awesome arcade front. And uh, you're welcome. Hopefully, there's one theme out there that uh, that you've enjoyed over the years that I've done. So that's cool. That's really cool to hear. 
I'd love to see a video of that. <laughs> if you can take a video and send that to me, that would be awesome. <laughs> oh, and Matt, yeah, I missed your question, but looks like Dave got it from you. It does exist in the forum build, according to Dave. Uh, probably looks similar to what you just saw me do. And it will only exist... Which views does it only exist on? Probably all of the platform views, I'm guessing. Anyway, I still have my original Game Boy Color, but I got rid of my Game Boy. However, I did get an original Game Boy that's only been used like five times. It was some adult in the 80s bought one, took it out, used it a couple times, thought it was fun, but the guy was in university or something at the time, put it back in his box and then forgot about it for decades. And now I have it. So it's like almost a brand new Game Boy just sitting in its box in my storage. I took it out to look at it once. And man, it looks brand new. Other things that I have, what's like... Ah, oh. You know what? What did you do with your, with your original Nintendo, Ernesto? I had my original Nintendo, I've got so many stories based off of that that uh, Nintendo Entertainment System, but the worst, the absolute worst, and I don't know why I did this, but I sold mine. You, know, you, you grow and you become a teenager and you want some money, so I sold my Nintendo when it wasn't really a big collector's item for like $40 with all my games because I needed 30 bucks that was a mistake since then I I got another Nintendo but it's you know it's not the same as your original one eh? <laughs> your first Nintendo system was a switch we need to get Dave to try all these retro games Oh, you trashed it because you thought it was broken. Yeah. Man, so many, so many mistakes we've made. <laughs> I've made over the years of all my retro games. Like I had a Super Nintendo and a Sega Genesis because, you know, Sega Genesis was cool here in Canada. And then the, the Nintendo 64 came out and me and my brother wanted it so bad that we packaged up all of uh, both of those systems went to the store and traded it in for the S Nintendo 64. Ugh. That... <laughs> that action did not age very well. However, I do still have my original Nintendo 64 in its box. So I got that at least. I think that's around the time, right, Ernesto? Like, around that Nintendo 64 time where we were old enough to basically say, you know, I'm not getting rid of this one. <laughs> I'm holding on to this. And I, I had just found, like, a couple things that, that I did by mistake that actually were good. I found, um... What was it? teenager of some kind I went out and the new Zelda games came out on the Game Boy Color those two games Oracle of Ages Oracle of Ages Oracle of Seasons for some reason I can't remember the name of the two games I'm sure you guys do oh you almost your mom almost made you give it to your cousin 
That would have been a mistake. And Matt, yeah. It should be listed in the other platforms, maybe. I feel like they should exist there, no, Dave? I, I don't actually remember, to be honest. But they definitely should not exist in a game's view. Yeah, they 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 don't go into those views, unfortunately. And I'm not sure how much it makes sense to be in that view. Anyway. So I had purchased both of those games brand new from the store. And I played them a few times. And then forgot about them. Because I had just gotten into the world of MMORPGs at the time. And that sort of took over my life for a while. Forgot I had these Zelda games sitting in their box. <laughs> and uh, found them. Yeah, found them a while ago and realized, hey, I still have these original Game Boy Color Zelda games sitting in their box in a closet. That's a good little accident right there. And Dave, so you went from the ZX Spectrum to the Amiga. So you had all all the microcomputers and the computers all the way in, in Europe. And then you graduated to the Saturn, which wasn't very big here because it was super expensive. And the PlayStation 1. And of course, the PlayStation was really... I still actually have my original PlayStation and its box somewhere. When I bought the PlayStation, it still had the the old style controller that didn't have DualShock. That wasn't a thing yet. And then I remember when DualShock became a thing. And you had those games that came out that were kind of confusing that used the DualShock controllers. Now it's like everybody's used to it, but I kind of remember feeling like it was a brand new style of of a uh, control anyway let's jump into the game view so i'm going to copy this just like i always do and i guess i'm going into the game text view yeah this one i'm going to paste it as the default one and we're going to see what we got it's going to be a bunch of broken stuff but we can fix it all right. Luckily, what we have is anything that's broken. We're going to fix. And then you can see here that uh, this is saying that the visibility condition that I made for this one uh, is not going to copy over. And that's okay. So you can see here, there's no platform title metadata on a game view. Every single view normally if it's like platform or game have different metadata bindings and that's why they don't really transfer over from view to view so let's just change this this should be the game i believe it's just game there we go okay so i'm trying to think the best way to do this I feel like I'm going to have to do this where I create multiple different ones per platform. I don't think there's a way for me to do this. And I, and I don't think I've ever done this actually on the stream yet. So yeah, maybe I'll just do it this way. So basically what I want is I want to have the box and the game be able to be able to be one bar that's the perfect size for every system that I own plus more as as we can do this for every system that we wanted to if we had enough time but we're gonna start with a default one actually cancel save that we're going to assume that there's a 4x3 video and a box that's similar in size to uh, some sort of vertical box like a Genesis, like a Nintendo 
entertainment system. They like a Nintendo Entertainment System. They should have similar sized videos and similar sized boxes, give or take a little few pixels. So I'm going to use this one as the default and then create alternative views, different size videos or different size boxes. And I'll fill in as many as I can for it based on what I have. And based on what you guys see in this video, you can then take this theme creator files once I can get around to publishing them. And then you can do your own per platform. I am receiving a YouTube message saying that you guys might not be seeing the most smooth video right now. If that's the case, I apologize. Hopefully my voice is at least still around. Did you ever, did you ever do anything to that PlayStation? Dave, you ever try to open it up and do some modifications to it? Okay, let's take a look at the Genesis. All right, good to hear, Matt. And of course, the, uh, the little warning message that it gives me went away. Let's look at Altered Beast. Okay. Cool. Okay. What I'm going to need to do is I basically need to just fit. So I don't need this rectangle for this mode. And I just deleted the video, didn't I? Hey Rob, happy Canada Day, yeah. Hope you're doing good today. Staying safe. Here in Canada, it is Canada Day, so I have heard. I think it started last night. They started uh, doing the fireworks outside. You can hear them going off. Guess people are doing their own little fireworks because all of the all of the big events got cancelled because of the pandemic, so People are doing fireworks in their backyard or in the big parks or something themselves. Okay, we don't need this background layer. I'm hoping this will be pretty easy to do. So in this case, I want this to be as close as possible. You can kind of see here that I've got a problem. I need to move this. But I'm going to have to move both of them, so I might as well put them in a grid. And see what I got. So I'd like this to be... Alright. I do want this to be zero, and... The widths, you know, just give me as much as you got. Okay, there we go. So far, so good. Now, I need to make this space large enough for the box art. So in order for me to do that, I do need the box art to be present. I'm 
can go to metadata. Where is the box art? Box front. You didn't get around to displaying the uh, the main image type transition yet, Dave, if you're still around. That'll be nice to have. Remember the thing I was talking about, uh, I don't know if it was last week or something. Right, the main image type transition image, which allows, then allows people to be able to use the flip, the flip box button in big box. So basically by default, I think uses the, the box front. So it's basically similar to this, but it, it, it allows that functionality. Come on. Uh, come on, I just saw it. Yeah. One of the transition presenters. There's lots of them, but yeah. The one for the main image. Something like that. Okay. Doing good so far. What I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock the canvas because this will make things a little easier. So here, uh, I just put my mouse up here. There's a bunch of hidden features. One of them's locked to canvas. I'm going to... No, I'm going to disable this. Look, you can even have grid lines if you needed, if it helps you out. Okay. Okay, cool. As long as it's on your list, that's cool. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to push. You know what? Maybe I don't need to push this. That's That's probably not a good move, is it? Now it's coming back in small chunks, so let me just bring it back. Okay, there we go. And the reason why it's probably not a good idea, and something that I haven't done yet, is... I should tell it that I want it to trim so that it adds the little dots at the end of a title that's too long. And then, another option that you can do I don't know if this is a good theme for it, but you can make the title wrap. What do people think? Do you want a title to in the text list to wrap so you see the whole title, but it makes that item selected too high or two rows high? Or do you want to just cut off to keep its uniformity? I normally go with uniformity. And I think Dave normally goes with multi-line uh, selected items. There's no wrong answer there, really. It's all personal preference, and this uh, creator will do both for you. Courtesy of the plugins. Okay, what I'm basically doing is I'm trying to buy myself some space so I can move this video to the side. I should probably have started with moving this stuff. So far, so good. There we 
go. Yeah, just for you, Dave. We're going with the wrap with overflow. So I don't know if I'll ever see a game that's too long in this instance, but. Okay, we're getting there. We're almost there. I just need this a tiny bit smaller. Okay, there we go. I can even make this bigger now. Of course, I'm on the wrong layer. There we go. Okay. Now that I made it bigger, I gotta make this bigger. There we go. <laughs> I'll do whatever you, whatever you think is best. We're trimming it up. <laughs> Okay, let's take a look. Pretty good. I think I have to edit this one. Yeah, so let's get through all of the informational panels. We'll go with the developer, which in this case is Sega R&D2. We'll go with the release date, which I believe I don't have to do anything for. It should just come over all the same. Yeah, looks good. And then let's take a look because I'm forgetting all of the little extra little bits. Actually, do I have to do the fan art? I probably do. So let's do... This one. Should be media image and I should just make it the fan art oops media metadata I should say it's already fan art there we go uh, I think we're okay and the reason I don't do a fallback folder or file is because there's already image priorities built into launchbox for this field so if you don't see fan art. What I usually do is I set my launch box, uh, launch box background image priority to fall back to like a screenshot. And then uh, at least I have something. That's something each user has the ability to control. All right, let me just take a look. Okay, so because I removed the platform title here, it's actually a smart move and I should probably do this a little more in my themes to add the metadata to display the actual platform. So therefore, and the reason why I kind of want to do this more is because then you would if people are using filters, displaying, you know, uh, games from lots of genres, uh, it'll change the, you'll be able to tell what platform it's from. Of course, if people did do that, it would not look very good in this theme, <laughs> unfortunately. Okay, so let's change this up a little bit. We're going to change this to white. We don't need all these extra fields anymore. Platform name. 
there should be a platform name. Game platform. There it is. There. We're on the Sega Genesis. I mean, you just said Doc's info rows. And that gave me a little bit of an idea that I don't think now that I'm thinking about it would work. Yeah, for another time. Let's continue. anything funny on this right oh I've got the drop shadow that's what I'm doing oops okay I think we're already okay here Last thing that we got to do, I will need a dock for this. And uh, yeah, this will actually be pretty fun, won't it? We're going to put a dock here. Something like that. I might have to make this smaller, actually. Let me do like that. Cool. Okay. So this one's going to be our genre and ESRB. That's a good question. Wait, which dock are you talking about, <laughs> Dave? Let's do this one. This one would be fixed. I think they're mostly fixed. I'm trying to think. If you do a dock that's not fixed, that let's say dynamically changes you know, I'd want the height as an example, but maybe I wouldn't, I could do the width as auto size. And now I bring in, you know, genre one for this, I look at just the first genre and I make it point to this right here. I feel like I'm missing a bunch of stuff. Oh no, no, we got, we got this. Okay, and then I put that in here. Okay, for that to work, I would have to tell it the height that I want, right? For each image. Is that right? Or just one image? Probably each image. Let's find out. Or do I auto size everything? There we go. So if I auto size it, it takes the height property of the dock and then makes it that large. Did I do something wrong here? Let's see.
Hey, Retro Lust. Nice to see you here. Hope you're doing good this evening. I guess it's evening where you are. I wonder if I did this wrong or if I don't have a genre hooked up to this exact game. Let's, I, I, I can't see that being the case. How's the, how's the bezel, uh, oh my god, how do I not have an al Altered Beast genre? <laughs> that is hilarious. Anyway. <laughs> How's the bezel grind doing? Aren't you almost done? Yeah, that's awesome. That must feel amazing. Has it been motivating you to get done more every day? And if you are, are you doing a bezel for all of the games in your library, like you have a curated list? Or have you done it a different way? Is it more like you're doing it a bezel for all of the games that have uh, that are complete completed in Mame or something? Arcade section of Mame. I guess I should just download your bezels and find out. All right, which game will have multiple different genres? Because I'm going to do at least three. Let's try... Uh, what do you think Streets of Rage 2 has? Okay, so you are doing your, your library. How does your library look then? Is it like highly... Uh, curated down to like a select bunch or is it more that you took the main main library and said okay maybe I don't want like these few hundred or you know these 500 ones that I don't even know I'm just gonna get rid of them but everything else is here because that that'd be kind of crazy Oh, you see what I did with this? Uh, I did this the old style of doing genres. Okay, that's awesome. You've been at it for a long time. To say you've been, you're almost done. That's that's crazy. All right, I'm gonna create another genre, and then uh, I guess I'll create the third genre. And you can see it's already doing the margins for me because at the time there was no good way to do margins without it not scaling well the different uh, different aspect ratios or different resolutions I should say so instead I just built the margin into the <laughs> into the image <laughs> these old images because I don't have to do that anymore uh, two. Genre 3, let's actually change the metadata binding. 2. And then I usually stop with 3. Why? Most games don't even have 2. Look at that. <laughs> like this game. <laughs> okay, what's next? Next will be something similar, so I'm also going to paste uh, the max players in this doc. Max players, and I'm going to point it to that. Max player folder, there it is. And then the last one, which will be a little different. Hmm. I'm gonna need a grid. I'm pretty sure grid is the best 
way or a frame. No, no, it has to be a grid. So I'm going to create a grid. Oh, this is going to be fun. I'm going to want the grid to be 188 by 174. And we'll put you right there. We're going to stick this one as an actual just static image, which should be in themes, star rating. So there's our star rating. I'm gonna stick you in there. You know what? There we go. Actually, I probably could have just did this, shouldn't I? There you go. <laughs> that makes more sense. Yeah, Mr. Retroless. Yeah, I'm actually almost done, I must say. <laughs> I say that, and every time I say that, I remember just how far away I am from finishing this theme. Wait, GameCube games? What are you talking about, Dave? Alright, last thing here. I need the number. And the number... Actually, no, I'm not done. The last thing, let's do the easier one. And that's ESRB rating. There we go. Point it to the ESRB folder and then we'll stick this bad boy underneath the max, max player. Oh, outside of this grid. There we go. And surprisingly, there's no margin to this one. Well, let's add a, a margin. That looks like it was too much. All right. So far, so good. Now let's do the harder part and actually get the number inside of this grid. I say it's hard, but it's not really that hard, is it? So we'll place the number in here. We'll make it the middle. Now we want the metadata binding to be max player. I think we're okay, so if I... Everything in the center here. What I'm going to need is probably trying to think for color. I already have the color there, don't I? Basically, whoops. <laughs> that wasn't what I wanted.
Okay, now we have to actually bring this in front of the max player. There you go. <laughs> and then I'll make this the same font as all the other ones, I guess. There you go. Of course, I got maximum players, and that's not what I wanted. I actually wanted the community rating. That makes more sense. So a couple things. There is a color picker inside... There is a color picker inside of the theme creator. I wasn't using that one. So this is the color picker right here. And so I'll show you what that looks like because it's actually good. Now the only thing about this color picker is that it, it will only pick the colors from uh, this one screen. So here I can I can basically go around and choose a color and it just basically picks it so if I wanted the color from this there so it does work and it's very good I have another one that I usually use I'm used to it it's called instant eyedropper and it allows me to click it and then it gives me sort of this option uh, and this one works on any screen so it's usually why I use it I can go to my second screen and pick a green color and then it will automatically put that into the clipboard based off of what I Uh, customize so you can actually customize that I want it to go in with HTML and I want it to look like this with the uh, this profile and that allows me to copy and paste it direct directly into the uh, theme creator without any problems so lots of different options in fact there's that third program here that also has its own color picker. I don't like it as much because it's screen color picker. And it freezes the screen. I guess it must take a picture of the screen. And then I can like choose the color. And then it copies it. So, hey. Three options I have. You can never have enough color picker options. Right? <laughs> Okay, Dave is right. I'm actually not liking this. Sorry, right, this one. I'm going to pair down this to 150 and then I'm going to manually move it down till I'm happy with the center nature of this yeah that's good okay how about that right Dave did an amazing job with the, like, he basically built that from scratch. It's not something that he, he, uh, took from somebody else. This whole thing. If I can even click on a layer that uses it.
Yeah, this whole box. It's so much better than it was before. This whole background, I'm not sure if you were around for that, Mr. Retrolust, but the whole background is just one giant gradient. Actually, I have the layer right here. This one. Yeah. You basically made this, which made it really easy for me to... <laughs> Look how awesome that is. Okay, and Dave is probably right that I have to do the visibility conditions on all of these layers, or layers, all of these elements, or else we might run into some problems so let's take a look genre 2 I can say that this is visible but make it collapsed if genre 2 visibility no wait that's not right <laughs> file is no does that work that works Dave right <laughs> Genre 2 file is not there. Make it collapse. Oops, make this visible, but make it collapsed if genre... Oh, I shouldn't do that. I, shouldn't, I should do it this way. If genre 3 value is no value. That's a better way. Genre 2 value is no value. That makes more sense. Max player. Add. This will be collapsed if max player, maximum player value is no value. And you can see here the difference is that these uh, yellowy orange colors are the actual metadata bindings values, whereas these white value, these white ones are uh, the elements that I added to this theme. Both are good. So I can do the same thing here for this grid. I can say collapse this whole grid. No, sorry, make it visible, but collapse it if your community or user rating value is zero or is no value. So it'll only show up, this whole thing will only show up if the, uh, your game has some sort of value there. And for this ESRB rating, I could also do the same thing, but in my case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a fallback image and say not rated. So if there is no if there is no rating, just say that hey, it's not rated then. And then you can change that. Users can change that if they want. Okay. So far, so good. Let me just look over. There is one last thing that I want to do. And this is the theme that I actually did this in first. I did do this last week. So this will be a little bit of a reminder of what happened last week. So this platform title, I'm going to need a doc for this. I'll copy this. Actually, you know what? I'm going to make this wider. There's no reason why it can't be. I'll copy that. And I'll paste the layout. Okay, so far so good. I do want to auto size the width here. And then I want to make an ellipse. 
and place it in here. So this ellipse will basically be able to say, oh, let's do, ready? Okay. This ellipse will be able to tell us whether a game is, whether a game is actually uh, favorited or not. So that's the goal of this. So I'm going to grab the color on my previous theme. I'm going to make this the color. Look at that. Perfect. I like the size. The size is okay. I'm trying to see if I like the position is, is, is okay. I am going to put a margin of maybe 20. There you go. Okay. So it's in a better position. And now all I do is set a visibility condition to say, I want this to be collapsed because I don't really want it to be there ever, but only make it visible if the favorite property value is true. I need a thumbs up icon. Yeah, maybe maybe one theme I can do that. You know, sometimes they're hearts, sometimes they're stuff. This this theme I was I was fairly happy with <laughs> like a few years ago of me saying, "Hey, I can I can make this this circle appear when somebody's favorited their uh the game and you can see I I that's why I I did it in the screenshot where I made this, the circles there because Contra here is favorited. So already with the list here, uh, there'll be a star next to your game that's favorited. So sort of like an extra little flourish, I guess. Okay, but overall, <laughs> a giant tongue to say that it's favorited or that it's broken because that might break your game. I think we're done. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make this layer a little bit less. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So we've got a working text view and a working games view. Look at that go. Nice. But we have a problem and I'm probably only going to do one more view on the stream just so that I can show you guys why we have a problem, how to solve this problem in this sort of way. Uh, so let me show you the most annoying thing about theme development. Okay. Sure. Here's a great... What are we noticing? That my bar is gone. <laughs> because the video is in a different aspect ratio. So... <laughs> here's one way that you can get around it. I can make a copy and go into we... You and paste the copy of the games view. So now any changes that I make in this in this view will only affect this one platform. You don't want me to just stretch it, but that would be such an easy fix. I'd be done in one minute. Ah. All right. 
do it the hard way. I'm gonna buy myself some extra little bit of room here, cause uh, I'm gonna need it. I realized I should not have opened that so wide. <laughs> okay. I'll do it for you, Mr. Retro Lust. We're going to make this work with 16 by 9 videos. But look how much space I'm going to need to do that. I'm going to need that much space to make it look half decent. I mean, I could probably buy myself a few more pixels on this side if I wanted to. You know what? Yes, I, I want to. And now I'm running into an issue, and the issue is basically <laughs> I can't have this be over this. <laughs> it kind of looks funny. So I am going to do something. Let's see, the easiest way to do this. I take this wheel, I'm going to animate the wheel. So I'm going to say this. During selection, I want to go, I want it to move from left to right from the current wherever it was to the defined. And I want it to do it within 0.3 seconds with a nice ease. Done. Now I'm going to do another one where I say, but once it's selected, I want it to then go from its current selection at that time to a new location. Oh, you haven't had it back in the, <laughs> the little button yet, Dave. So I'll have to do this manually. Three hundred. That seems too much. Two fifty. And take start at one point five seconds and then take a half a second to do it. Okay. Let's see if I can animate it in this view. I'm forgetting what the animated Alt A. Uh oh, it's not moving. <laughs> Wait, this isn't like all the, this is isn't 250 from the left, is it? Because then I've, I've really have to rethink my strategy here. I mean, this is probably more like 1500. Anyway, I'll figure this out. Let's save it. Maybe I gotta save it. Ah, there it goes. Okay. Not enough for me, says I'm on a, a larger screen this week. But it is working, so that's promising. So once selected, go to like 2000. How's that? We're getting there. So we're just gonna keep pushing that over until it's not in view.
to 150. 2150 should maybe do it. Let's see. Look at that. All right now we can we can see what's going to happen. I'm going to change the game. It's going to come out. I'm going to land on a game, and it's going to push itself in. Something like that. And so that's my solution for that. And it's still there enough that if you went into the game details view, you could still see your options. So I don't have to do anything fancy there. Uh, other than that, basically what you would have to do is you would have to go into all of the views that doesn't have this bar, which I mean, I could probably name them off. All the handheld ones seems to have really skinny videos. So you would have to sort of modify it for that. All of the, uh, oh, there's some other ones too. There's the ones for, uh, I mean, all the other 16 by nine ones, the PlayStation one will look different. The ones with the horizontal boxes, what I'll probably end up doing is I'll probably end up, actually, I mean, let me show you that one because that one will be pretty, pretty simple to do. So for anyone that's, let's say the Super Nintendo as an example. I mean, we know what's going to happen. The video is going to look exactly the same, but the box is not going to look great. <laughs> you can kind of see that there. And so the only option that we really had in the past is to make the box smaller. Well, now, since this is a specific view for, for the Super Nintendo, I can just paste this box art, call it the uh, the cart. I should have pasted in place. And instead, I'll just paste the layout there. All right, I'll make it go to the bottom. And then I'll just change this simply to game cart front. Please say I have one. There you go. And that is a ginormous cart. So I'm going to gonna make this a little smaller for myself yeah probably about there and now realizing that I have to center it centering it it goes and we're basically done there are things that I can do to polish this up and uh, let's do one polish pass before I do anything else. And you know what? I'm going to do it on the platform view. So a couple things to keep in mind if you were trying to do something, trying to uh, polish it up to your liking. So if you took this theme and you said, well, I don't like this or that element because of just these little nitpicky things, you know, the things that we OCD over, one thing might be that while I'm selecting the game, I want this title to also change as well. So a simple thing to do, I go to the platform title and there are these options and there's a ton of options here that I kind of overlook a lot of the time. One of them is update when. So either update once selected, so it'll only change once you stop on a particular item or update during selection. It'll change every time you change to a new text. Every time you change to a new game name, it will update this as well. And so because of that, what I can do is I can take this developer and release date and I can animate it. And I can say once selected, well, let's do this backwards. During selection, why don't you just fade yourself out to zero in 2.5 seconds, 0.25 seconds. I don't really need these, but 
I'll do that. And then here it comes. So a new one. I'll say once selected, why don't you come back? In one second. Probably too long, but... And therefore, this fades out, this changes, it looks like it's cycling through. Once it stops cycling through, this will fade back in. Then I can take that, and I can paste it on this dock. And so that'll do the same thing. Fade out, fade right back in when you get to that point where it needs to show something. Here's a couple other things that I could do. But I'm gonna need a grid to do this. So let's create that grid. We'll copy this rectangle. Paste the layout of it. I'm gonna stick everything in there. Now looking at this, I already see I had a problem that this will solve anyway. Nice. There we go. Make sure that this is centered just by this align. I'm sure it is though. And now what we'll do is do a little bit of animation. Oh, this is going to be hard without the... <laughs> That's okay. We can do this. So I'm going to say new location. That location will be... 2000 it's pretty far over though so maybe 1900 and I want it to happen right away in about one second with an ease out and we'll do the same thing with this rectangle as well so I'm gonna Left to right immediately, I want it to go from a new location, which is essentially minus 150. And then I'm going to, in one second, have it fade or move into its slot in its defined location. And it only happened once when you load the into the view. So these are little polish techniques that we can use. Let's see what it looks like. Of course, it's not going to happen now. <laughs> okay. I'll have to switch views. Here's one I got to redo in the theme creator cover box. Well, that's going to take. That's going to take a long time. Okay, let's go back to Illuminate and see if I can pop it or do I have to publish it? Yeah, I'm gonna have to publish it and that's fine. I think we're basically ready to publish it to see if it what it looks like in the editor looks the same in the actual in the actual big box. So let's publish it up and let's go take a look. I see what happened. Okay, give me a second. Let 
There we go. Opening it up. No, let's wait for it to close. Look at that. See, just that slight animation. That is a good question, Nathan. Which startup video is that? So that's a that's a long story, to be honest. Um, the thing about that startup video, it has a long history. <laughs> so that's like technically the startup video is. Oh, you can see I'm going to have to fix that background there. A little bit so that startup video is mostly I believe it was 2009 there was an MTV video awards and they played that video during that awards I it was probably like the intro video or something and since then it was taken and repurposed with uh, different music to be this really old crappy quality intro video and and uh i used it back in the days when i used hyperspin and it was a four by three video in fact the original video was four by three someone and i don't know who somehow repurposed the video made it widescreen uh and then made it a little different and then put new music to it and so i i, I got a copy of it and said okay I love that it's like been upscaled and it looks nice now but I like the original music so I actually spent time and found the original music with the sound effects and changed this video to match I, I realized that the sequence of events wasn't perfect like things were slower or faster uh, in in the one with the song that I liked so I basically edited the video down to make it perfectly match the song that I like so it's sort of like the original is an MTV video award video intro video but the one that I have is sort of a custom-made video that I don't know maybe I'll release it on the uh, the launchbox forums if people like it there's already a copy on the Launchbox forums with the different music that, you know, might be good enough for most people. Really cool video though. But yeah, we're basically good to go. The bar is there. Got a little bit of bleeding with the black bar in the background on the lefts and rights, but not too bad. Let's take a look inside of the ones that we know will work, like this one. Uh, it's working as we like if I wanted to go into this game and go into the game details it switches it you can see everything good so far so good let's go into the other one we know uh, Nintendo Wii U so this one's gonna look different oh <laughs> so that's something I'm gonna have to fix <laughs> and then go here okay comes out and then it should slide back in nice if I go into here see you can still see all the options there still pretty good not too bad cool and this is uh, if Dave ever watches this it's this flip box button 
that will not work just because uh, the box art that I'm using is not the transitional front image box art binding that's needed for that functionality to work. You would download it, Nathan, if I shared it. I'll, I will probably share it. I mean, there's nothing stopping me. It's just a culmination of a lot of people's work. And it just so happens the I just modified my copy a little bit more than what's available out there. Okay, so overall, we just have a few bugs. I really like that animation when you come in here. You really like that the, the platform names are changing while everything else fades out. And when I stop on a platform, the developer and the release date fades in. You know, basically as soon as the, the video comes in. So these are little kinds of polish that you can place on everything. Other than that, we're basically done so I think I'm gonna call it a day I will edit this off camera just a little bit do a little tweaks add a few more game uh, I'll probably have to look at my old illuminate theme and just make sure that it's matching and it's got the same amount of of uh, per platform views so I'll add those and we'll probably have to add a system view but it'll just basically I think I have a, a, a file for that anyway. Other than that, we're good to go. Until Dave actually goes and creates, uh, I think he's getting, he's getting close. He's getting really close to finishing this version of the theme creator. Uh, there's one more big thing I know he wants to get done and uh, I'm pretty sure he's announced it. And that's this right here. So we're gonna have the ability to have wheel item templates so you can create your wheel inside a big box or sorry inside of the theme creator and you can even visualize it and see and make it look the way that you want and then you can apply that wheel profile template to any one of your views and that's what he wants to accomplish that's going to be the big task on his shoulders to get done the icons here the icon doesn't really do anything right now and i can't wait to see that once that's done he'll be able to share this update with everybody and then at that point I can share the theme project files on all the themes that I've done up until this point and at this point there's been three uh, and probably when he's done this maybe there'll be five or so we'll see anyway thank you so much everybody happy Canada Day if you're in Canada uh, and we'll see you guys next week thanks a lot everyone